Now let's start um, exploring the funeral um, architecture in China. And uh, we looked at some tombs from the uh, Shang Dynasty and Zhou Dynasty uh, <clears throat> because, you know, before the Han Dynasty, uh, most architectural information came from tombs. So uh, we have to focus on the kind of fun funerary architecture uh, before the Han Dynasty. And uh, after Han Dynasty, we um, focus mostly on other architecture, you know, palaces, um, religious architecture, etc. So in this kind of a thematic lecture on funerary architecture, we will primarily kind of considering those tombs, especially imperial mausoleums from the Han Dynasty to the Qing Dynasty. Um, <clears throat> you know, in general, Chinese imperial mausoleum uh, has the strong axiality like in the palace architecture. You know, from the first emperor's tomb in the Qin dynasty, we know that the first emperor's mausoleum was created to mimic the living city of uh, Xianyang. So um, um, mausoleum had the same emphasis on axiality, symmetry, and display of power. Um, and in that sense, it belonged to the same kind of ritual system, uh, ritual, highlighting those ritual um, formality uh, in, our, in the spatial um, display, uh, which is uh, opposite to the garden uh, plan. Uh, so the funeral architecture, it has a strong kind of axis um, and highlight symmetry, uh, display that uh, layer of spaces that are presented basically as facades connected by a passageway. So entering each space, you are looking at a surface, you are looking at a face, you know, one face after another face, just like in the Forbidden City. <clears throat> you are basically going through a center and looking at symmetrical faces. That is the primary spatial experience, which is very different from the garden. In the garden, architecture is not presented as a face not presented as a facade, but presented as a kind of fragmented um, elements hidden behind um, nature, behind the trees. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we talk about the, we looked at the Shang and Zhou dynasty mausoleums. So in Chinese history, there were um, some periods where burials were really extravagant, um, you know, very costly, and uh, sometimes using human sacrifice as well. Uh, so those periods are known as periods for extravagant burial, um, like in the Shang to the Zhou dynasty, when, when monumental uh, you know, pits or monumental um, mount uh, were created to mark the burial site for the rulers. <clears throat> and uh, the Qin um, mausoleum for the first emperor is the largest pyramid um, 
you know, in terms of footprint uh, in the world. And uh, the Han Dynasty <clears throat> pretty much follow the Qin Dynasty tradition, constructing pyramids. And this is the Emperor Wu of Han's Mao uh, mausoleum, also in the city of Xi'an. And uh, um, Emperor Wu was the fifth emperor of the Han Dynasty uh, who ruled um, in the late second century BCE to early um, first century BCE. Uh, the Emperor Wu's <coughs> reign. So his tomb, a truncated pyramid, <coughs> smaller than the first emperor's, uh, but still pretty uh, large, pretty monumental. It belonged to a complex, a mausoleum complex. So that's um, the Empress pyramid enclosed by uh, walls with gates um, on the cardinal directions. And uh, <clears throat> so um, his wife's tomb separately buried behind to the west. And then on the east side, we have the tombs for um, his two fam uh, favorite generals. Um, General Wei Qing and General Huo Qubing. So those tombs, those, you know, um, officials favored by the emperor were honored to be buried near the emperor. Um, so, <clears throat> um, so here we are looking from the distance, looking at, uh, looking at those smaller tombs, honoring the empress, empress generals, right? So that is the, um, the mausoleum for one of his favorite general. So they are pretty far, you know, the pretty far away, even though they are considered the same, um, Mao mausoleum area. And um, so the distance between the emperor's tomb and the general's tomb is like a kilometer. Um, so more than a kilometer, right? It's that far. So <clears throat> those, emperor, those general's tomb were also pyramids, but much smaller in size. So here we are looking at the, um, um, the Empress tomb, but from the, the courtyard um, of the general's uh, mausoleum, where the famous um, sculpture of a horse um, with a fallen warrior under the horse. Uh, was on display. So these generals uh, were the crucial leaders for the defeating of the Northern Nomads under Emperor Wu's reign. Uh, so they fight the Northern Nomads known as the Xiongnu. Um, and uh, so the sculpture uh, on display there kind of celebrate um, their great military achievement um, using the symbol of a horse and uh, a fallen uh, kind of warrior under, under the horse. The meaning of the sculpture had been debated. Um, so, and uh, some believe that it is depicting uh, the victory over the nomadic Xiongnu 
by the Han army. So that in that case, the horse represent the Han troops and that fallen, um, uh, fallen warrior represent the barbarians, Xiong Nu. But other scholar um, would argue otherwise. They believe that those fallen warrior represent the heroic Han troops. Uh, and that horse actually represent the great um, horses from the uh, Sorgadin region in Central, Central Asia that were famous for being able to protect their fallen masters under their own body. So in that case, this is a horse trying to protect the uh, <coughs> The fallen uh, warriors. So there are, you know, we, we don't really know um, what these sculptures exactly mean, but they definitely have something to do with the military uh, nature of those two masters, in this case, those generals who helped the emperor to defeat the Xiongnu nomads. Uh, <clears throat> this is another. Han Emperor's tomb. Um, today they are all located in the farmland, but it used to be enclosed by walls and the gates, defining um, a kind of a necropolis, um, a undergra uh, underground city um, for the dead. Um, so this belonged to Emperor Xuan um, of Han. Who is you know about um, half century after Emperor Wu, um, who rode in the um, in the mid uh, first century BCE, and uh, this picture from the air shows the kind of truncated uh, pyramid, built in steps actually built in steps, and with a flat top. <coughs> <clears throat> um, none of those imperial tombs were excavated, so we don't know what is underground uh, look like, just like the first emperor's tomb. But uh, many kind of uh, uh, regional tombs for officials, their tombs had been excavated. So um, these are the underground chamber for some of the Han tombs, not the imperial tomb, like those big tombs. So those were not excavated yet, but these local um, lower level tombs had been excavated and shows us the interior. Uh, so we will pick, pick up from here. Um, actually some of the uh, artifacts in MFA um, you know, MFA owned one of the most famous uh, brick painting from Han tomb. <clears throat> Some of you might have seen it in the Chinese gallery there. That looks kind of like that. And they are from the same period of Western Han dynasty and from a local Chinese tomb, not the imperial tomb, but a, a Han dynasty tomb with paintings. On those those trusses and beams, right? So um, we will stop here for today, and uh, thank you.